Well, we had an exciting morning, huh? Great. Um, Troy you know, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I don't know if Gavin did. I, I slept. I took a, a double dose of Nyquil last night. I've been fighting this head cold for the first time, so I, I slept like a baby. I close my eyes and just see this Discord chat now. Um, <laughs> I, I guess this is going to be fun getting into some uh, yearling data, kind of your opinions on some subjects of the, the thoroughbred industry at the moment, kind of sales sales prices, uh, looking at decreases, increases, and a couple things. I'm super excited to kind of hear your thoughts on this, and then also at the end get some community members up to ask you uh, questions. But to kind of just start it off, um. As, as we could just look at, you know, certain sales and certain racetracks at the moment, as Saratoga, you could see that, you know, prize pools have gone up. Also, you could see that the inc a little increase in amount of horses per races. You could go look at some yearling data on sales. And it looks like on the sales side of things, you know, the industry is kind of striving at the moment. You know, absolutely. And, and before... I get into the, the sales data. I just want to say uh, to the community that, especially in the racehorse business, and a, a lot to do with niche markets, is there's so much data that can be dissected and and you know uh, pointed into a direction um, that skews a lot of the bigger pictures. Um, and I'll get into that further, but what happens is in communities is what I've been seeing in the community is there's a, a lot of people that are here that are absolutely new to the racing industry. And there's a few people that are knowledgeable. And then there's a few people or, you know, a, a big part that have a little bit of knowledge that is confusing and they're presenting um, data that is true, but at the same point in the larger picture, it is very, very small piece of the puzzle of what the thoroughbred horse racing is. Um, so what we do as a company is we give approximates or we give numbers that are very easy, easy to digest that they could be off a percentage point here or there, but to go ahead and dissect a couple of percentage points or dissect even a 5% range, then there would have to be a lot of explaining to do of true meaningless facts. So I'll just, I'll just bring up one little subject and then uh, Squid, I'll answer your question and then we'll go. When we start talking about approximately, or when we mention 20,000 foals or, 20,000 horses being bred. The true numbers, which again, this company truly comes from a, an amazing statistical indebted horse people. The true data uh, over the years is between 65 and 70% of broodmares get pregnant and have a full. So there's 11 months and four days that when a horse is bred to when the horse is born, that amazing things happen. And there's unfortunate parts of life that happen. As a company, we don't truly want to go ahead and have to explain mother nature and all the things that could go wrong. We're trying to present the thoroughbred racing industry in the most positive, fun, gamified way that mirrors the, the real world horse racing, the best part of it. Not the little negative part that people love to talk about, love to exploit like PETA and other organizations or the debate about Lasix, the, the debate about one or two bad trainers out there. That's not what we're here for. So if anyone truly wants to learn more about the data and the statistical data about the raising industry, there is numerous websites like we have seen. 
you know, the jockey club has all those numbers, Equibase, Blood Horse. It's all public knowledge. And if there's any reasons or questions in regards to the data that we put out there, it's always for everyone's best interest. So I just want to go ahead and, and, and throw that out there because for us or anyone to truly explain why um, a horse, uh, you know, that there was more horses bred and less horses born, th that's a conversation that could take five years. And at the same point, you know, in regards to the horse sales, um, talking about, uh, you know, I saw some comments out in, you know, the Discord, how, you know, why we picked these horses. Why um, did uh, we come up with the 75 horses that we picked? They're all from the sales. And the reasoning and the answer is absolutely it is. But for a, a new company like ours that is trying to give the best experience of the racing industry, especially in the very beginning of the years, the process that a horse goes through to go into a sale, it's a lengthy process. One, at Keeneland and other racing uh, organizations or sales, they come and inspect the horses. So check mark number one, the horse is living and breathing as it accepted into the horse sale. Two, two weeks before horses or three weeks before the horse is uh, gone to the sale, he has to get a blood test. He has to be making sure that the blood, he doesn't have certain diseases uh, that can cause uh, dramatic uh, stress uh, on the horse. That's another check. Horse is living and breathing and is healthy. Then he has to get x-rays. He has to pass certain x-rays to be accepted at certain sales. Check mark. Horse is healthy and we feel very confident that the horse is going to make the races. Then he gets video scoped. What a video scope is, is that he checks all the breathing passageways of the racehorse. And he, they get ranked. A, 1A, 2, 2B. Anything less than a 2B, that horse isn't going into a sale. Statistically, a horse that races and does well his, is usually everything above a 2B scope. That's another check mark that we put in the column of now we know that the horse physically is pretty good. We know that he is not with disease and his blood work comes back positive. And now we know he could breathe. Check mark number three. So we felt very, very, very confident that these horses have the best ability that we are aware of that is going to make the races and have a very positive future. Now, there are horses out in the communities that we are aware of, that there's 10,000 other horses that are out there right now that potentially could race and do very, very well. Why didn't we put them in the race sales? And I'll give you an example, like Gold Dolphin, who has the leading um, stable in, in the world for years is because he breeds 12, 1,500 horses a year. And that could be off, I could be over-exaggerating, but I know it's close to 1,000. But we only hear of 10, 15, 20 of his horses a year. So there's like 800, 600, 500 horses. They're not, we're not sure where they are, how healthy they are, or if they passed any of the tests to go ahead and get into the sales. So we're not willing in, at this time to risk the ability to have horses that we're not really familiar with. What we're working on as a company is to work with the jockey club, is to work with the real live horse breeding communities and getting knowledge and availability of information on horses faster than everybody else. And again, that is taking the extra strides of a company to bring the best superior product to our community of the game of silks so i just wanted to throw out those couple of uh statistics and things that i've seen in the discord and the reasonings why we do anything do the things that we do and at the end you guys can ask me any questions you want 
So uh, Squid, I apologize, Ben, I apologize of going into that direction. But to answering your question in regards to the, the sales data, um, the sales amazingly are strong for the last couple of years uh, into the racing industry. And the reason being is that purse money has been going up year after year and it's not slowing down. And what that means is that we're racing for a lot more money. And when you race for a lot more money, that means the horse's valuations and what they should be costing us goes up. And the community sentiment of the racing industry is not to buy and sell so many more horses, is to buy and race. And when the end user, who is the owner of that horse, is looking to race that horse, they're willing to spend a lot more money on a horse because the end result is better because we're racing for more money. You know, I'll give you an example. One of the few horses that people paid a million plus for um, is a horse called Flightline, which I'm, uh, I'm sure everyone has seen or a lot of people have seen in these racing in the Breeders' Cup uh, next week. And he was bought at a million dollars. And there was an article just yesterday or the day before that they're selling two and a half percent of him at the Keeneland sale. And they're valuing that horse at $60 million uh, for his future stud or, or stallion duties. Um, those are end users who bought that horse. You can't buy a million dollar horse to go ahead and try to sell at the next sale. So that's where we're starting to see the real prices of horses exploding is because we're taking that little piece of pin hooking out of it which um, really shows the true, like a better valuation for horses. Um, so I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, which is like crazy to see all the, the sales stats go up. But as we've seen some articles come out recently and just some numbers, it does look, even though sales stats are going up, why are we seeing a little decline on broodmares being bred? Um, some stallion numbers, you know, that we get, what's, how is that going to affect in the long term, or does it even play a, play a factor in this situation? You know, and that's a great question, because, so that's where I was kind of mentioning statistical data that's going down. In reality, more broodmares on a yearly basis, uh, uh, or let me say this, more, more new broodmares on a yearly basis is being bred than over statistically over the last five or six years. But at the same time, what's happening is horses are being retired uh, faster. So it's going to take a few years for the market to realize um, that we are trying to breed more horses to bring more inventory into the game it's just that we're in that that part of the uh, of the cycle where more horses are still retiring than being bred um but more new horses are being bred and, and what i mean by that is before we very rarely bred a horse that was less than four years old um to ha to become a broodmare now what's happening is a lot of horses are being bred at three and believe it or not they're even being bred a very few at two and what's and the reasoning why is that the valuations of horses are skyrocketing and they're selling for a lot more money so people are trying to breed horses earlier than later now what happens is because of that the racing inventory keeps on going down. So that's where we are now, is that we, we, we slowed down breeding six, seven years ago, 2008, with the you know real estate crash and like anything else, people stopped breeding horses, we saw the decline, and then it takes a full cycle for, the, for that to, to switch, and you'll start seeing the amount of horses that will start 
producing. And in my opinion, in the, in the next two years, we're going to start seeing the production of horses increase. Yeah, and I think a, a, another good perspective to get from you, I know Dan was talking about a little bit on his AMA, was, and you kind of just spoke on it now, as we see a lot, a lot of great horses are getting retired way earlier now in their, you know, three-year-old year, which, you know, another thing in the industry, some people like it, some people don't, but kind of looking at retired stallions, how many a year, uh, I, I don't know the exact number we put out yesterday, but at the same time, to just keep in mind, like, out of out of that amount of horses that get retired to become sires, you know, it it could some horses might you might get a big hit. Some horses might only be a stallion for a couple of years. How how does that really determine how many years does it take, you know, for you to figure out, all right, it looks like my guy's not his crop's not performing and they just retire him from stallion. What uh how do you kind of look into that? Well, you know, that that that's another great question. And again, the, the statistics of horses, stallions being retired to become a stallion, we, we might only hear about 30 of them or 35, 40 of them a year being retired, but there could be 100, 150 stallions that are retired during the year. But do we really want to, as a company or as a game, talk about the 250 horses that retired to being a stallion to the, the horse that is in North Carolina that is breeding one horse a year, do we really want to give people the hope of, oh, I, I got a stallion that's sitting in North Carolina and potentially I can make a million dollars in this game. So again, that's statistical data that we don't really want to go ahead and have to dissect or get anyone's hopes up. We're, we're trying to you know give the pertinent information into the community. So the 30 stallions a year that we know of that has a potential to go ahead and make legitimate money and profitability as a stallion, those are the ones that we really want to talk about. So um, so to further answer that question, I, myself personally, I was going to breed three to four broodmares to this stallion called American Freedom, who was at Airdrie Farm, who I have, you know, that I breed horses there every year. And this horse is a pulpit, which is on the same as the Tappet line, which again, Tappet is, you know, one of the top five all time stallions ever in the game. And I really like his pedigree and he really hasn't produced a great horse yet. He really got, hasn't gained traction. And there's a saying in the game that every stallion is going to have one great horse. So I really like he fits in a lot of my broodmares. So Andrew just came out and announced their stallion roster and the fees and the horses and on the stallion roster. So I'm going, what just happened to that horse? And now they sold him. And I believe he's in Arkansas being a stallion. So one now I'm not going to breed to him, but that goes back to your answer is when, um, does a breeding farm give up on a stallion and, and move them? And it's really depending on what the stallion barn is and what their business is. Like Windstar, they move stallions very, very quick. If, if they don't gain traction in them or three or four years, um, the amount of money that they invested in that horse, because the amount of broodmares they breed to that horse and they try to attract their better clients to the, the newer stallions, they give up on that horse pretty quickly and they move on and they've made mistakes. They, they gave up on a horse daredevil and they sold them to Turkey for like a million dollars. And then they bought him back for like 20 million uh, because he produced two out of the, you know, two great Philly and, and mare um, horses like two years later. Um, so it's really dependent on who the owner of that horse is how much money they really put behind the horse into the brood mares and how much risk they still want to take in the game without, you know, moving that horse off. But that's what normally happens is a stallion that's here in Kentucky that is starting to ha not pay his way. They'll move him to another state um, and just, you know, give that horse the opportunity in a, in a lesser, let's say uh, playing field. And hopefully he'll gain traction there 
and then they see if they make that decision to bring him back. Um, it just happened with a horse called Gervin. Um, he started out in Florida. He bred two years. His horses came out. Um, something like 48 horses were coming out of his two-year-old crop, and he won like 50% of the races. And now they just moved the horse from uh, Florida to Kentucky, and now his stud fee went from 5000 to 20000 in one year. So it, it happens on both, both parts. Yeah, and that also could reflect into Kentucky Breads racing for more, right? Correct, correct. And that and that's funny too. You mentioned that because I've seen people make jokes about Arkansas in, in this chat. But doesn't Arkansas uh, isn't their pool their pool prize going up in Arkansas? Are they raising? Yeah. So that that's another you know example. We in the very beginning wanted to highlight Kentucky, New York, California, Florida racing because that's the biggest uh, stages. But Arkansas, those horses are going to be coming into the fold very soon because it's a very small niche market, like like horse racing, and they have uh, very large pools of purses because of again uh, outside sources of, of revenue, and those horses definitely make a very nice amount of money. The only difference is that the highlight of an Arkansas bred to go ahead and make the Kentucky Derby, it, 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 it is a little off. So th that's, that, that's the part that we kind of shied away from again in the beginning. And we'll put it into the fold because revenue is revenue. Purse money is purse money. But we, again, wanted to try to get a, a smaller uh, pool of horses that we felt very confident that, a few of them um, will make the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, that's uh, that's all the questions I have for you. Uh, if you have anything else, and we can move on to answering some questions. Yeah, let's go to some questions. And you got it from here? Right. I think you're a little better at this one. Good morning or afternoon or whatever it is for you guys. Thanks a whole bunch for this. I didn't I didn't expect to wake up to what I woke up to this morning, but shit happens. I only wanted yeah. to offer excuse me, Troy, go ahead. No, I was gonna say in the racing in the racing business, this is what we wake up every single day. Every day, just like having kids, there's gonna be issues and hang ups and but the 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 best part and the most profitable or let's say the most successful businesses are the ones that handle the situation the best you know calmly quietly and uh you know that that go ahead and bring out the superior product so that sounds great i only wanted to offer one thing um by way of uh adding to the things that you were talking about uh cuz everything you were saying is pretty Correct. Just when you're talking about these horses that are now getting retired earlier, um, i.e. in the case of Flightline, one of the things that I've never heard anybody mention that I really know strongly to be a, a contributing factor and a truth because I trained for Penny Chenery for many years. I trained for many years and I know why they retired Secretariat when they did. And I know why they're retiring Flightline, because he could continue to run. But the insurance policies that you are forced to carry on horses that gain the notoriety and the success that a horse like Flightline has, the mortality insurance is ridiculously high. And that's one of the reasons that these really good horses don't go on to race at four and five. Just offering that right out there. and and that's great, and you know, so I'll give you an example i I pay one hundred and eighty thousand plus a year for my insurance on my horses I bet. but again that is that is part of a lot of businesses, right? like everyone has insurances, everyone has to put certain protocols in place, and that's a business decision 
that is that is made, but that's not necessarily anything to do with our game. Um, the game of silks. That's just a, a part of reality in life and statistical data that is micromanaged by few, but for the hopefully 500,000 people that might play this game in the two, three years, that, that's inconsequential. Okay, inconsequential, facts. Okay, I'm learning. Thanks. You got it. Thanks. Better, Jay? Yeah, morning, guys. Hey, um, everything's kind of really been covered so great. I've got a question to do with the horse mint passes. So at the moment, we have probably like 40% of the crop with a pass available, if I'm right. Um, uh -huh. So if it stays at this volume, then it would be presumed that only 40% of the 7,700 will actually race. Um. And then the future of the 60% would be uh, revealed only if another horse mint, is, another horse pass is minted at some point. Um, so is there a plan maybe down the track where we'll get access to passes or we have to generally what we have to mint another avatar to, to release that horse? Um, and then like in 2023, 2024, Maybe some of those first year crops are brilliant horses, but what? How do we get a, a horseman pass for that? And is it kind so, of a concern or, or I, not? I can, uh, if only forty yeah. percent go to the track this year. So I'll um, one that is more of a a, a game uh, part of it. I I will. I can tell I you can answer that. the for the first part, Troy. So that's Go a good ahead. question. Uh, Geoms actually brought that up. I don't know if it was yesterday's AMA or before. Uh, at the moment, there's nothing as we come closer to, you know, the end of December, the end of the year, once the the, the mint closes, there yet from a statement from Silks, what will happen with the, the unminted horses yet? So that's un unanswered right now from the team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and just to to give you our our ultimate goal always is to to make sure that everyone has as much fun and upside opportunities possible in the in, in this game so um we're doing everything in our powers to make sure that we facilitate that if, if that helps you out yeah 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 I, um there's a few viable options to sort of progress the mint to say right now um you know and even in the third minting session we've just had which uh probably could get a few more holders in um aren't really taking uh, some pretty easy steps there to um to create an incentive for people to mint um and yep. create more horses from this in this crop um so it is a little bit frustrating to see from a from a sales point of view, uh, when there are yeah. some steps involved that, that could see a lot more passes being minted right now. Yeah, and all I can say is have confidence in the team, have confidence in the company, and uh, I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised that your concerns are, are internally being discussed and we're coming up with policies and procedures to to facilitate that and there's a lot of really good things that are happening and we're just learning from uh past mistakes of maybe dangling carrots out there too early but um i, I think you'll be very happy very shortly yeah and, and the other thing too to everyone to keep in mind like regarding marketing as you see now is just posted i don't think announcement went out uh, Casey, the new CMO that we're all, you know, really pumped up to have aboard is going to have his uh, AMA next Thursday at 1 p.m. So, you know, starting to talk to him, him starting to get community feedback on a lot of marketing stuff. Like it's only going to help progress, you know, the promotions and stuff coming up. And, you know, I, I think everyone's going to be excited to meet him. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time, guys. Absolutely. Thank you.
Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Hey, uh, I, I did join a little late, uh, but so you may have answered this. How'd your race go yesterday? I did not answer it specifically for that reason. No, just kidding. Uh, I, I say, though, Troy, that, that's a good little, like, spin, too, to kind of say, like, you know, <laughs> what was he bought, 17000 7000 He was bought for 7000 um, and how, how much has he, he brought in race rewards? He uh, made 150 as of yesterday. You know, that's so. a good IRL story. In a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at that. This yeah, and it, you know, and, and, and I can even go further, and then I'll, I'll answer the question how the race went. But, you know, the more that we keep on taking a deep dive into this into this game and the strategic, you know, part of it where you start learning some of the pedigrees and, and just by seeing certain things, the, re the reason why Mount Rundle was bought was because I owned his half-sister, and I loved his half-sister. And I knew that I was going to turn his half-sister to a broodmare, a horse called Dura Cure, who has a beautiful upstart filly next to her, or, you know, her, her first filly. Um And I wanted to protect the family because I knew the horse was going to go cheap, I knew the uh, older sibling wasn't doing real well, but at the same time, I tried to buy the older sibling for 50000 because it was a hard spawn. He was huge. He was just too big of a horse. And th th this horse had all the qualities of the, the, the mare, the, the, the horse that I owned. Her name was Dora Cure as the racehorse. So for seven thousand dollars, it was a no brainer. I wanted to internalize the destiny of the, of, of the family. I wanted to protect or cure as a broodmare, and that and that's what we did. And you know, knock on wood, he really turned out to be the horse that we thought he was going to be, or who we thought Dora was going to be. Uh, and that's how this horse's purchase came. And that's what the ability every single day in this game is going to be, is where people could do the research of families and see their siblings out there. Maybe they're not bred as well but you truly like the family and you keep on investing into that family. And one day it's going to pay off. Um, but to go to the race, uh, unfortunately, um, we got, we got shuffled back to last. Um, they went one sixteen to the three quarters, which is really, really slow. The front end ran away. He ran the second fastest quarter of the race and you know he picked up a few lengths down the stretch but he that was it so uh it, it it was a unfortunate more of a training mile than a race for us and uh he'll just give us an opportunity to to race him back quicker in uh churchill and then we'll see what to do with him for the winter time but it was it was well, a little disappointing Keen, keeneland's been tough uh we've been in on a number of shakes but we haven't been able to to claim any horses back there uh yeah, the the money seems to be you know growing and it's just going to grow even more going to Churchill I believe right the the purses are even bigger so you yeah they're up about you gotta have Ben drop the claim card for some good luck why yeah, is Ben uh, Ben they're up ben, ben Ben's good on the shake listen Ben Ben's been rolling lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you, you know that that was good info that you gave about you know family and all that kind of stuff and and knowing the history and and know you know and then finding value because uh, you know there was there was a horse that was in you know last week uh, that was a half to maximum security and they scratched him but you know just understanding you know what to look for and and i know more of your community will start you know being able to look at pedigrees and look at uh you know what uh is in the family and what to you know expect and yeah. we've been i've been talking with a number of, of people within the soaps community about uh the term blue hen you know just yeah. you know understanding you know the female side of things so that was a good explanation thank you troy yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll give you a quick story about Max and security. Um, and it's a great story for the community to, to even if you think you know everything about horse racing, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to see oversight. So, you know, uh, myself plus another friend of mine, we were both going to drop claims in on maximum security for his first lifetime start. 
as a maiden 16 claimer at Gulfstream Park. And we both looked at the horse and we both said, ah, we're not dropping claims in on him. So we had the claim slip. We had the money in the account. We could have easily claimed that horse. And we both looked at him and said, we're not claiming him. And then, of course, the horse wins, you know, by 16 lengths that day or whatever it <laughs> yeah. was. And go, goes, you know, goes ahead and uh, becomes makes 12, you know, makes a, 12 a million bucks. Correct. Correct. So that's that's what's the you know, those are the stories that every you know it's the fish tales of of fishing the the stories and the community of being in this racing world is so cool is because everything that everyone in this community now touches is going to have a story behind it and that's what we all live for which is pretty cool i'm watching keeneland right now and uh we decided not to drop in in this particular race there's a the third race has uh a bunch of older horses that uh, have form, but you know all those horses in there have uh, history too. And uh, sometimes it's hard to find out whether or not uh, a horse has any issues or or what it is. But uh, yeah, we we've been we've been watching you you know back there. And uh, anyway, I uh, really appreciate what you're doing. Absolutely, thank you. Thanks for jumping up, Triple Crown. All right, I think that's everything. It's everything but everything. Everything but everything.